In the beginning, the great cloud brought together uncountable pearls of water, each no larger than ourselves, and the great cloud molded them into a raindrop, and our world was born. Tyran listened carefully. She had heard these words many times, spoken by Martin, the leader of their world. Martin waved his flagella hypnotically as he spoke, and all the bacteria gathered around were spellbound by his words. Tyrion listened as Martin wove the story of their people, how for many ages all had been peaceful until the discovery. The discovery was made by Mycus, one of the wisest and most intelligent of all the bacteria. He would stand on the edge of their world and by observing molecules of water, he determined that a great force was acting on the surface of the raindrop. He stood before all the bacteria of Tyran's world and made his announcement. I have made a great discovery, he intoned. I have discovered that our world is moving. It is moving with great speed. We are not still. We are going somewhere, and we are going somewhere quickly. Many of the bacteria became frightened. Where was their world going? Would things change? What would happen? But Tyran felt no fear. She was fascinated by Mycus and would sometimes spy on the sage, watching as Mycus stood at the edge of the world and did strange things. Mycus would press and pull at the edge of the world and claimed that by doing so he could see things far away, things outside the raindrop. He soon announced more discoveries. He said that there were many raindrops, many worlds, all moving swiftly through space as ours was, all moving in the same direction. Far away from the gatherings of other bacteria, Tyran found her own spot at the edge of the world. With her flagella, she pushed and pulled at the edge, but for a long, long while, she saw nothing. She did not give up. And finally, she discovered Mycus's secret. By gathering water just so, pressing with some of her flagella and pulling with others, she could move the edge of the world and use it as a lens. And with this lens, she could see beyond, out into space. She peered out, hoping to see the other droplets Mycus had seen. But she saw something else, a great something, enchanting and beautiful. It was filled with colors, greens and browns, tans and sparkling blues. It was immense, stretching as far as she could see in all directions. She wondered if she should stand before everyone as Martin and Micus had done, share her discovery. But for a time, she kept her discovery to herself. She came often staring out at the great, beautiful something. Slowly though, she began to notice something the green parts and the brown parts and the tan parts and the sparkling blue, they were all growing larger. They grew and grew and Tyran could see more and more detail. It was the next time that she came, pressing and pulling at the edge of the world until she formed a lens, that a realization swept over her. Every flagellum stood on end. The reason that the great something was becoming more detailed was because it was coming closer. Her discovery and Micus's discovery suddenly meshed. It all made sense. Tyrion's world and all the other worlds that Micus had discovered were hurtling through space, straight toward the great something. Tyrion shared her discovery. She stood before everyone and told them what she had found. Micus rushed to the edge of the world where Tyrion had pushed and pulled and confirmed her discovery and Martin began to speak. The world is coming to an end, he said. We are rushing toward the final moment when all that we have known, all that we have built will be destroyed. Micus had planted seeds that had grown fear in some, though not in Tyran. But now hearing Martin's voice, even Tyran felt fear. After all, she had seen the great something and now she understood that their world was rushing toward it with great speed. Soon, all would be over. Tyrion grew sad. She went to the far edge of the world where she had made her discovery, and she pushed and pulled and watched the great something as it grew ever nearer. 
Behind her, she could hear the fear and anguish of her people as they cried and fought amongst themselves and tried to devise plans to avoid the coming end. Tyrion watched. She let all the sounds of the others drown out, and she watched. As she did, she felt something inside of her. At first, it was small, a tiny, delicate thing that was lost in the chaos of fear that threatened to break her heart. But Tyrion grew curious about this small, delicate thing, and she began to watch inside of her, just as she watched outside of the edge of the world. This small, delicate thing wasn't fear. It felt completely different. It felt like wonder. And it delighted in the growing details of the great something, and the bright colors, and the mystery of what it might be. It grew and grew, and as it became stronger, fear struggled and fought to claim her. But the fear, she saw, held no meaning. It made up stories just like wonder did, but it didn't feel good like wonder. And so Tyrion let the fear go. It crumbled away and she pressed her flagella up against the edge of the world. She no longer needed to push and pull. The great something was so close that it was there for anyone to see. Most of her people had fled to the very back of their world, as far away from the great something as they could. Martin spoke to them there, telling them to prepare for the end. But Micus came to stand beside her. He looked out with wonder as well and reached out a flagellum to hold hers. Together, they stood in silence, staring outward as marvelous visions filled their gazes. It is time, Tyrion whispered. I know, said Micus, and they joined flagellum and held each other as the end came. There was a bump, a jarring, but not enough to tear them apart. Tyrion's world changed shape, sloshing and breaking. All around them, their fellow bacteria were jostled about. Everything changed around them. The world flooded with color, bright and vivid and beautiful. And then, all was still. Tyrion and Micus looked around them. They saw their fellow bacteria looking around in wonder as well. A new world greeted them. There were other bacteria in new, wonderful forms. There were objects of all sizes and shapes, each one marvelous and mysterious. And other worlds fell all around them, breaking and shattering and reforming into something new. I, I thought it was the end said one of their fellow bacteria, gazing about in awe. I thought it was over. No, whispered Tyrion, this is not the end. This is only the beginning.